Hey folks, in this video, I am going to go answer two questions that I've gotten about how to create fake shadows while also doing something about the object. If you don't want something like this showing up, uh, we're going to talk about how to fix that. And then the other question I had was, how do you get color inside your light functions? Uh, in addition, we'll go over some of the basics. Like we've got um, the light function that creates a flickering light. And I'll just show that as a real basic starting point. And then finally, you've got something like this, where you've got an object that you want to cast a shadow and what if you wanted it to cast a different shadow so as i rotate this you can use a different shadow that will come out so i'll explain all of those all right so let's get started uh, this first one is just an image on a plane and let's we've got the image it's a it's just a png with an alpha kicking out now you might wonder is it an opacity mask opacity masks are going to be the more efficient but we can do better than that in terms of the number of shader instructions right so you'll get more as you plug more in but really we don't need the base color so that's a little bit of an optimization on top of that I had it set to two sided just for demonstration purposes. So we can uncheck that. And the we need the blend mode set to masked. And the shading mode we can set to unlit. Now, if we just hit apply, one thing we've got going here is that we could do something like this where it'll work but if you have your if you have this placed somewhere where you're going to be going to the other side so basically if you just have this set up so that the surface normal is facing away and the light source is coming through here you will be able to use this as a shadow caster uh, but we want to be able to have this so that the transparency is all the way through so how do we do that there is a uh, a shadow pass switch that we can implement. So let me bring this up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into the shadow and this will be into the opacity mask. Now the default will be zero and the shadow pass switch will kick out only the shadow. So when we hit apply, now it's transparent from both sides. So just once again, how did I do that? Basically, I've got the default is set the opacity mask to zero, but anything that comes through that could cast a shadow, it will generate an image. So that's a good way to, to use fake shadows on objects. All right, so that's the first one. Okay, the second question was, how do we make the light function have some color. So basically what I've got is I've got a material on this with incandescence and we want to pretend that light is going through here and casting some light down onto this surface. So what you can do is you can set up a thing called the light function and I've got a material. Let's open this up and we've got this material here. One of the key things that you need to do first is to tell the material domain that needs to be set to a light function. And then um, what I'm going to do to make this so that you can get all three colors is I'm going to draw the blue channel, the green channel, and the red channel into three separate light functions. Now, I want to warn anybody who's doing this that it's a bit expensive. What do I mean by that? If you hold down um, Alt-7, you'll see the light complexity. And that shows that while this may be green for now, 
uh, and even blue as we turn on the light functions for the other ones. Let's go back, I'm going back to Alt 4. Now I've created three lights. And what you do with the light function once you've created this material, you I've got this spotlight and you scroll down to the light function material and you just drop that right in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a R, G, and B light. So this should be set to blue. So we could just type zero for red, zero for green, and one for blue. And now if I have the green spotlight and I turn it on and the red spotlight, I've got an R, G, and B source. Now I could probably do a little bit better than this, maybe slightly blur or you know to make this a little bit more realistic but this is the the basic gist of the of how do you have an RGB and now oh, let me hit alt 7 and now you can see that this is sort of running a little bit hot in terms of light complexity so it's not cheap but you can do it all right uh, the other thing that I wanted to show off was the basic light function so I'm hitting F to zoom right in here and let's scroll down. This is the basic light flicker. And this is a tutorial that is right inside of the Unreal documentation. So you can just copy these nodes. This is just a scalar parameter. I called it the flicker speed. You can take a time node, plug that into a multiply, into a sine node with a frac and then just take that and combo that with the color. Now in the tutorial, there's even other ways of doing like a texture projection and you can combo that with a panner, but this is the most basic and a lot of, a lot of people want a basic light flicker. And so you can make this as this number goes a little higher, you'll get faster flicker speeds. So I wanted to show that. And then finally, that's right. We wanted to show how to do this where we had this shadow and we have the, you know, they have the, the object and then you have a, a fake shadow that's off of a visible object. Well, it's basically the same thing that we've done. If we double click, I've got two, two materials. I've got one that's the actual object uh, and then the using the shadow pass switch, I'm kicking out the the fake shadow. So you can have an object that casts uh, a virtual shadow. And where I've seen this used more often is in when you like fly into an area in a, in a third person character video game, there's like a transparency as you go through objects, but you still want any trees or rocks or anything that's in the the scene to still cast shadows and so you're going to want to have even if the object itself gets transparent you still want to cast the shadow pass through there all right uh, then the final i guess finally there's other ways of obviously generating you know light that's moving through here we've got um, this you know we've got more ray patterns on on the walls of this pool. And I've seen that done actually in a couple different ways. You can have a post-process material that's animated. Um, this one's just built into the, the texture itself of the pool. All right, well, that should answer those questions. If you like the video, give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more weekly Unreal content.